one of the most important aspects of nutrition is the brain now the brain came about through uh, years and years of evolution and there are a group of uh, researchers amongst them Alilio and Wheeler and they coined the term expensive tissue hypothesis so there is a whole bunch of stuff here that is trying to tell you what is the optimal diet based on how our digestive anatomy is what our stomach does, what our pancreas does, how do we do fermentation, and how do we neutralize toxins that we come across in our diet. But before we get into all of that, we need to address this issue. Why is our brain so enormously large? How did it come about? And you come up with a ratio, and for humans, it's amazingly about 4.8, and our closest ancestor, our closest primate is only 1.9 and animals are much lower than that. Number one, our brain became an enormously large. Number two, we have a huge brain for our body size. Number three is that it takes a lot longer for the human brain to mature. Many, many years compared to that of our closest relative. So here it is trying to show why this happened. So when you have a larger brain, this gives you cognitive ability to find better food so you get a higher quality food and by this I don't mean a value judgment and that higher quality food will give you more energy to make your brain even larger so what is higher quality food so higher quality food is by design something that you don't need to process as much if you have to take a raw material and process it to the final uh, form and refine it that's a lower quality food and you will soon find out what is higher quality food versus lower quality food and as your food quality becomes higher you don't need a digestive system that is basically extracting things from its rawest purest and most unrefined form so you can deal with a smaller gut you don't have to have such a large gut. So what are the benefits of a large brain? Number one is that it gives you what is called cognitive buffering. Your brain is smart, you can find better food, and as humans can cooperate, we give energy subsidies to pregnant women. They don't have, back in the olden days, they didn't have to go hunt for food. Children will be given while they're growing uh, energy subsidies. There is a social aspect of it. And then this is an extremely important aspect, which is cooking. So why is cooking important? Cooking is important because you are pre-digesting your food outside, even before you ate it. And cooking is an important way in which we neutralize toxins and bacteria so that we don't stress our gut so that you can feed your brain so in other words you reduce the size of your gut you reduce your your stomach becomes smaller so that you are spending less energy processing the food and the second thing would be bipedal mobility in other words instead of walking on all fours which is much more energy expensive walk on two feet humans do this very well it's very energy expensive to produce new, new children. So we have reduced birth interval, which is same as having a longer uh, gestational period. We ha don't have eight uh, age size litter, we have one litter. Uh, we have a larger neonate so that it can survive. And we have a longer reproductive lifespan, 25, 30 years. 